Morning all, it's Rod with MarineHowTo.com. We're in the lab this morning talking about how to commission charge your lithium iron phosphate batteries. Let me uh, rotate the camera here so we can see what's going on. Okay. So what we've got here on the bench today, we've got two different types of power supplies. One that's just variable and one that's programmable. They're both 10 amp power supplies. And I've been recommending any lithium iron phosphate battery owner to have a benchtop power supply as far back as 2007. So I'm, I'm consistent on this and I'll, you, I'll explain the exact reason why. So what we have over here is a watt cycle 100 amp hour mini. Yesterday I discharged it to zero to try my best to unbalance the cells because no two cells are exactly the same. So when you go all the way down to zero and then charge them back up, you can have an imbalance. I think I was at, and I'll put a picture up in the video, I think I was at 0.12 or something like that yesterday. And after I did this commission charge, I was at 0 0.004 balance wise. So this is, this is how to commission charge. And the reason I'm doing this is because not all battery manufacturers do what's called batch and match their cells well. And that means that they, number one, they match them all as close as they can for amp hour capacity. And then they top balance them and get them to a perfect balance before they even put them in the pack. Well, it doesn't always happen. And all of these drop in batteries, I don't know of any yet that have an active balancer inside. So it doesn't matter which one it is. They all have what's called passive balancing. What is passive balancing? Well, it's very simple. So when any one cell, so inside the battery you have four cells in a 12 volt battery. Each cell is 3.2 volts. When any cell gets to the voltage that triggers balancing, the balancing activates. And what that does with a passive balancer is all it does is this one cell brings a resistor online, or the BMS does. And that resistor just burns off heat so that it slows down the charging on this particular cell and allows the others to catch up to it. So you ha you'll have a high cell and you have a low cell and they take the current, they burn the current off of the high cell so that the others can catch up. Well, that's all well and good when you're charging at relatively low current. However, most every drop in battery out there has a recommended charge current of 0.2C. What is 0.2C? 0.2C is 20% of amp hour capacity. That's all. Very simple. So when the reason for that is to allow the passive balancers to hopefully catch up and do a good job. But before you, before you start using your battery, you really want to make sure all the cells are in perfect balance. And how do I do that? I'll show you. It's very, very easy. And, and this is very important with batteries that have what's called overcharge protection. And I'll touch on that in just a minute. But here's how I do it. And, and anyway... This is a 10 amp 60 volt benchtop power supply. I think it was about 130 bucks on Amazon. If you're just doing 12 volt batteries, you do not need a 60 volt version. That raises the price. You can buy just a 10 amp by 30 volt and it'll be a lot less money, probably like 100 bucks. Now this one over here, why do I have two? Because I'm showing you how people mess up. And uh, this type, the variable with just the dials, very, very dangerous for the novice who doesn't understand what they're doing. And I'll show you exactly why here right now. So what I have here is a six amp hour battery and it's pretty depleted. I don't know what the state of charge is, but probably below 50%. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna complete the circuit with this power supply. And then you can, as you can see, it's set at 14.1 volts, but you'll see what happens. So we're charging at almost 1C and we still can't raise the voltage beyond 13.6. Well, here's the mistake that a lot of DIYs make. They go, well, this thing's putting out 14.1. I should be C14.1. Well, so what do they do? They go and they touch the voltage dial and nothing happens. Well, because the reason it went to 13.8 and 6 amp is because that's what I have the maximum set at. But watch, I'm going to show you how you make this dangerous mistake. It's not at 13.8 now. Boom, it's at 31 volts. Because you always have to confirm your power supply into a voltage meter, the DVM, like this. So as we can see, it's plugged into this one right now. But if I unplug these, 
from here and plug them in here, you'll see that it's 31 volts. In fact, I'll do that right now. See? And th these are not very accurate, by the way. But they can work. You just have to know that one risk right there. If you touch that voltage dial after you've connected it to the battery, you're screwed. Because even with 31 volts and 6 amps, which is 1C, we're still only at 13.7. So anyway, I'll turn that back down so we don't do any damage to this battery. Um, but that's, that's the mistake that too many people make. I've seen more than my fair share of these what are called prismatic cells all blown up like balloons. If you overcharge these things, they swell and they're ruined. So if you were to walk away from that thinking you were at 13.8, when that battery got full, what happens is, as we can see right here, this is connected to the watt cycle. Last night I charged it to 13.7, and right now it's only accepting 0.052 amps at 13.7 volts. So what happens is, when the battery gets full, you go down to this, but now your voltage is 31 volts, you're screwed. You're totally screwed, especially if you're top balancing cells. So what I recommend is always purchasing what's called a programmable power supply, where I can set the voltage, or you can set the voltage and the current. And this one actually has an overcurrent protection and over voltage protection. So right now you can see that I have my over voltage protection at 14.6 and my overcurrent protection at 10.2 because this is only a 10 amp uh, power supply. And by the way, when you're charging bigger batteries, always run this at 80% of capacity. So it's 10 amps, I run it at 8 amps. That way you don't burn the thing out. This is actually a pretty good one. I have others over here that are not so good. This one's made by B-Side. It's a 20 amp power supply, again, programmable. I was using this to, to charge our security camera batteries, but I came back to the shop one day and the screen was dead. So I took out the fuse and it was blown. And I said, oh, that, that's odd, because I wasn't, the battery was just sitting here charging at like one and a half amps, but the fuse blew. I put a new fuse in. The minute I plugged it into the wall, I heard the fuse pop. So Amazon sent me another one because their manufacturer was not responsive at all. The replacement died in three weeks. So now this company, before I even bought this one, I emailed them just to confirm that they were responsive, and I asked them a few questions, and... This has been great so far. I've had this for over a year now. So This style, they're horribly inaccurate and uh, very, very difficult to adjust. And it is what it is, you know. But, so anyway, getting back to the top balancing, initial commission charge. And why do we want to do a commission charge? Well, about a year, year and a half ago, the battery in the BMS is coming out of China started showing up with what's called BMSs that do overcharge protection. What is overcharge protection? Well, when the battery is deemed full by the BMS, and typically that is a low charge current, typically about less than 1% of capacity flowing into the battery, or 2%, and a voltage above a certain threshold, it determines that the battery is full, and it turns off the charging FETs. So the problem with that is if you have two batteries in parallel and the balance is not absolutely perfect before you put them in parallel, what can happen is one cell can hit a high voltage and shut down that battery before the other one is done charging. And now that battery that shut off is not going to re-engage until a, a certain voltage because there's hysteresis built into the BMS. So once you start discharging, the other voltage that was at a higher state, of, the other battery that was at a higher state of charge because it was better balanced, winds up doing all the work until you get down to a voltage where the second battery kicks in. So if you start with perfectly balanced batteries, or as close to it as you can get, you'll have much less of a chance of that. The other thing that you can do, of course, is you can lower your charge voltage. But you never want to lower your charge voltage below where your balancing voltage is. This one will balance anywhere about 14.1 volts as a pack or 13.6 volts if the balance is up by more than 30 millivolts. So 
If you have a differential between the lowest cell and the highest cell of 30 millivolts, the balancers kick in at 13.6. If the balance is below 30 millivolts, it doesn't kick in till 14.1. So I'm going to show you what I do here. And I'm going to move this a little bit closer. Because I don't really like editing. So I try to do these all in one take. And I don't have these scripted. So, But what I'm going to show you here is how I set this. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it from the 13.7. It, it would take a very long time to get to this to zero because it's at a, at a low voltage, but 0 0.4 amps is low enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this at 14.1. which we know gets us to our balancing voltage. Well, heck, I'll just put it at 14.2 because we know we're going to get there. And now what I do is I reduce the charge current to about 1.5 amps. And the reason for this is because, remember when I mentioned that the passive balancers can only shunt or disperse about 50 to 70 milliamps. So this is barely above that. If we're charging at 0.2C, those balancers cannot burn off enough current to allow the lower cells to catch up. So what we're doing here is setting the charge voltage once we get to 13.7, and then we're adjusting the current down to like 1.5 amps. You can do it at one amp or whatever, but the point is that we don't want to be too high above what the balance current capability of the shunt resistors is. And now we just let it sit here until it gets to 14.2. And I did this, uh, I've done this numerous times. When I first charged this, I charged it at 0.2C. And at the end of charging, my balance was off by, I think I'd have to look at my phone, but the phone is my uh, DJI monitor right now. So I'll put that in the video, I'll put images because I snapped screenshots. And we can see what the balance was before doing this. And then I'll show you a screenshot of what it is afterwards. And as you can see, 13.7 is pretty darn close to full. Because with only 1.5 amps, and if I lower that down even lower, to say 1 amp, we can see that we're still almost full. 13.7 volts is damn near close to 100% state of charge. The reason I stop at 13.7 is because if you go to 13.8 and do that, you are at 100% state of charge, basically. So I, I want to allow this to have some room to balance, and that's why we turn this current down and do that. So if you do this to both of your batteries or all three of your batteries that you have in parallel, before you put them in parallel, you'll have much less problems with overcharge protection and the batteries contributing evenly and it, Watt Cycle has this issue, Epic had it, Lead Time, Redodo, and Power Queen all have it because they all have overcharge protection. And there are numerous other batteries that now have overcharge protection. The reason for overcharge protection, guys, is because too many people were insisting on using their regular lead acid chargers. And the manufacturers realized that, well, crap, we can't put a five-year warranty on these batteries with people charging with lead acid chargers that have four-hour absorptions or two plus hour, two to four hour absorption cycles because we don't want the batteries at that high a voltage for that long. They just will not last through the warranty cycle if you do that. So they put overcharge protection in there to save people from their own stupidity of using a lead acid charger when they should be using a charger that's specifically designed for lithium. I prefer Victron chargers. Nothing in the industry can touch them. They are the best charger for lithium batteries, but you can buy whatever you want. Just make sure it's a lithium charger that turns off when the charge is done and then turns back on. I, I prefer a charger that goes to float after that and then storage. And Victron chargers do that. None of the other chargers do. Nobody else has a storage mode. So anyway, that's how I do it. And we can see we're getting down to a very low current here. And this VMS, again, balances anywhere between 0.5 and uh, 50 millivolts and 70 millivolts. So we're still got enough current here to allow that hap to happen. And if you get your cells topped up,
Just be careful with this type of power supply. They're cheaper. They're like 80 bucks. This one in 30 volt 10 amp is probably close to 100. I'll put a link to this in my Amazon store if you want to try this one. I've had very good luck with it. Keep in mind, none of these small ones have uh, voltage sense terminals on them. So what you want to do, the first thing you're going to do is throw the stupid leads away that come with it. These things are absolute garbage. You'll have more voltage drop than you can shake a stick at. So what I do is I replace them with 10 gauge silicone wire. And I make my old leads up. And then they're, they're screwed right in here. They're typically six millimeter terminals on all these small power supplies. So you just need a quarter inch uh, terminal and away you go. I use these 75 amp uh, copper, pure copper clips. They're very rugged. And I'm seeing as I'm only pushing 10 amps, uh, they work really well. I hope this helps, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.